Welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video, I'd like to take a look at two things. And the first one is creating icons for our features that we have created a couple of episodes ago. And then I would also like to create something that is called global auto layout. And global auto layout in this context describes a situation where your whole page is arranged within an auto layout. This means that whenever you'd like to make any edits, it's really easy. So let me just show you how difficult it is right now. Let's say that I would like to add one more section between, for example, the horizontal cars and the this one, right? Quotes. What I would have to do is, let's say this is the new section, looks absolutely similar to this one, and I'd have to move all these sections below and then just move that over here and make sure the spacing and alignment and everything is all right. And uh, that is going to take a lot of time. I'm not even talking about when, for example, you need to change sizes of individual sections then you need to rearrange everything. So that is something that we would like to avoid. So that's the reason why we are going to be creating the global auto layout later in the video. But now let's take a look at these icons first and let's create something really simple that will uh, reflect the overall visual style of this website. So right now, at this moment, we don't have any icons. We just have colorful placeholders. Yeah, since we are talking about color, the first thing I would do is actually make sure these colors fit the color theme of the website. And specifically, I'd like to go for this image. So that's kind of the color scheme that I that I really enjoy about um, about this website that we have created together. So let me just take the first icon and as you can see, we are using, again, I keep saying this, the component-based approach, which is a, a website design approach where you define components in one place and then in your web design, you just keep using these instances of these components for easier object management, right? So because we have set up these features in this way, where we have these icons placed across these features, I am going to just take the first one and change that to black because one of the colors that we are using is uh, is black for the text for buttons and uh, i think this feature could reflect that so as you can see when i update the icon here it's being updated in here right in the instance this purple one maybe magenta one i would like to maybe sample a color from this image from somewhere around this area where it's the most magenta right so right here for example and yeah i think right you can see how it matches matches it more closely so I, I would even maybe go for a slightly darker one because this place is a big outlier so let's go for this yeah i think that makes more sense because you get this color repeating here and maybe here so something that is more in line with the overall theme perceived theme of this image uh, i think is a better choice uh, for the blue one Let's go for, um, I don't know, like um, this blue right here, for example, or maybe something lighter from here. Yeah, you just have to kind of, the goal here is to be able to look at these icons and then this image and then say, oh yeah, right, I can see how they are connected, right? So that's the goal. And yeah, the green one. Um, there is no green in this image, so that's gonna be the biggest change. And I'm going to sample, I think we could go for this yellow right here, or orange maybe. Uh, so that's what I'd like to choose. Yeah, it's mostly yellow. So this is a bit too light. I think we could sample from here maybe, this kind of mustard-like color. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that works. Maybe a bit lighter again, less saturated, something like that, yeah. Let's, let's shoot for this. And yeah, so I think these icons could have shadows, right? So they could kind of glow. So let me just select the first icon and then go to effects. Hopefully it will be reflected right here. Looks like it is. Um, so I am going to set the values to like maybe 10, maybe 10 as well and blur it and then decrease the spread to make the shadow a bit smaller than the actual object and yeah i think this works again the reason why we are doing this is to be easily able to update the shadow from a single place so since it's tied to the icon 
it should be reflected in the icon component. And now here's the thing. We have a specific shadow setup and in order to do not be retyping this in multiple times, I'm just gonna take this, select this uh, variant and then I'm gonna click on the effect, Command C to copy this, select these remaining three and then Command V to paste it. And now what we do is just we change the color. That's the only thing we change. And we are getting more efficient with this, right? So again, blue one, let me change the color to blue, use the eyedropper tool to basically create this effect where it looks like it's glowing, right? Maybe let's make this one a bit darker because it's yellow after all, or maybe less prominent in general. And also, yeah, I think this could be also a bit more subtle. So let's decrease these opacities. All right, I, I think this works for now. Now we need to create the actual icons. So this is going to be a bit challenging. There is no actual features that we have because this website is just a giant placeholder, essentially. It's a giant template. So we don't have anything uh, and I think we could make up some features. Let's say the first feature is going to have something common with users or with people, right? That's a very common thing. So let's just quickly create an icon for people or a person. So I'm gonna press R to create a rectangle or a square. Then what I'm going to do is remove the fill, add the stroke, make the stroke, I think, let's go for four, make it really bold and then change the stroke alignment to center right so this is what we get then what i'm going to do is select this rectangle press enter select this line until it turns blue like this as you can see right now remove that and press enter so that's going to become the torso of uh, of our stick figure of our person right essentially now when you do this make sure to go into the corner radius section and then increase the corners to whichever value you'd like to go for in my case i think i'm gonna just go for a this u-shape thing um of course there are multiple ways to create this shape but i'm just gonna use this one that i'm used to and that's uh, something that is valid in general so in general whenever you're creating design usually there are multiple ways to arrive at something and um, you can't really say which process is right and which one is wrong as long as all of them take up similar time in your workflow then that's basically up to you yeah so once i create an ellipse as well for a person for our user i'm gonna duplicate this person icon and then I'm gonna kind of select these shapes and remove the left side of this person, right? Sounds horrible, but um, let me just remove this and then select this vertex and move that over here. And what I'm trying to achieve here is an effect where it looks like there's you know, multiple people. So something like this maybe, duplicate Shift H so that we get more of these, right? And yeah. This kind of looks like there are more people, but I think we could make them smaller. So let's go for 16, yeah, 16 uh, of in height of this object of this shoulder essentially. And let's make the head smaller as well. So like this um, and then move that. Yeah, let me just duplicate this, use that here. So if you're creating like multiple people, if there is a, a group of people where one person is, is standing in the front, usually, uh, the person in the front will appear bigger, right? So you wanna reflect that in this icon design. Yeah, and now as you can see, this is quite, it's just too big for our uh, circle over here. So let me actually take this and change the size to 50%. And this is gonna shrink our people to half the size. And then I'm gonna move them over here. And with these people still being selected, I'm gonna change the stroke color to white so that we get this. And then I'm gonna group it and press option H and option V to center these people against our icon container, right? And you can see that it's being updated right here. So the first feature is gonna have something to do with users people, groups, uh, social functions, whatever, right? The second feature could have something to do with, with note-taking, right? For example, with note-taking. Um, let me use a rectangle 
again stroke that's gonna be two pixels center the stroke against the path and then let's just press enter and create a new point here a new point here and then select this one and remove that so that you get this right uh, then let's just adjust the position of these points and by the way i am accessing and also moving outside of the shape by pressing enter right so as you can see if i press enter with this selected i get into edit mode and then by pressing enter i go outside the edit mode um right and another rectangle again stroke two pixels and this is going to be the pencil or the you know the stylus or whatever the thing that's going to be used for taking notes i'm going to rotate that and move that right here right so this has definitely something to do with writing because or some kind of creative process maybe um also a very frequently used icon that i see all over everywhere basically and then let's let me just decrease the height of this and let's do some rounding right so this is gonna have like rounded corners maybe three and maybe specifically this one point is not gonna have three in the, the radius but just let's say one or maybe even zero let's try that out and then corner rounding on this paper or whatever that is interface for writing and let's use round caps um, and adjust the position of these points again using enter to enter and exit the shape and yeah i think we don't want to do the rounding but we want to go for a round join so that we get this essentially yeah i think this looks good let me set that to white and then let me group this and put that right here and then press um, option h and option b and this is the result this is what we get and we have it right here nice that's our second icon maybe looking at it from a distance i don't particularly like this space being bigger than this one so let me just Press command, select that, and increase the distance by one or two maybe. Does that help? Yeah, I think that helps. I think that helps. Let me also select pencil and make this a bit shorter. Make this pencil a bit shorter. Right, I prefer this. All right, and the third feature, why don't we just create something along the lines of um, a desktop device and a mobile device, right? So again, two pixels, let me change sizes then do some rounding and then remove actually don't remove anything use a pen tool and create a line and let's just make sure this line matches uh, you know the screen so that's going to be black at first two points two pixels distant from um, green above and then let's make sure these are centered is now 10 from here and 9 from here so let's just increase the width of the screen by one so that it's in the middle. So that's our desktop device, PC. Let me rotate this screen and duplicate that and also create this mobile device. And this mobile device is gonna be placed somewhere around here or maybe here on the other side. Maybe the screen is gonna be smaller, right? And since we could kind of get rid of the overlap right here, I think I can press enter, add a point, add a point, select this point and remove and then play around with the position of these two points. I think this works. Maybe, maybe we wanna, we wanna move it further from the PC like this so that we get some spacing or no, no, let's, or like this. I don't know, I actually don't like how this icon is turning out. I think I'm gonna get rid of this and let's just, let's just create a, a, a more basic icon like a computer with a check mark yeah, I think this I think this is sufficiently creative. So let's paste that here as well and change the color as well uh, so that we get this, right? We get first feature, second feature, third feature, and the fourth feature, I don't know. It could be something with sharing, for example, right? We could um, we could do this share icon where we have a rectangle with a stroke. Again, we need to make sure that these are all in a similar style, right? So same stroke width. We also get corner rounding 
but we create a point here, here, and here, and then delete this one, right? So that we get this kind of a box. Um, I'm gonna change sizes of this box. If you, let's just, that was quite fast, so let me go over it again. I have a rectangle uh, that I rounded corners on, two pixel wide stroke, black center, and I'm gonna press enter, click here, then click here and here, and then remove the middle one and press enter. And then we get this box, right? I'm gonna change sizes of this box and I'm gonna then use the pen tool and create this arrow thing. I'm gonna change size of this to about 14 by six, 14 by five, maybe. In any case, let's make sure it's centered against uh, this box and then one final thing, I'm gonna use the pen tool again and create a line coming out of this arrow like this. And yeah, this is basically the share icon, right? Maybe 12 by five. Now we can make this even smaller, I think, like this maybe, or this, or make this longer. Move that to the top a bit more. Move it back because I don't like it. Yeah, that's just the process sometimes going back and forth trying all different alternatives and now let me group this and move that here and here's the thing this is yellow or mustard or orange whatever i'm not sure if we can use white on the icon but let's try um yeah i think i think we can use this however we could i think we can use this i think we could make this yellow a bit darker so let me select the color of this icon background go to hsl uh, and since l stands for lightness that's the last value and let me reduce that by a few numbers by a few points 49 for example just to make sure that our icon can be easily recognized and maybe let's also try and play around with this. Yeah, so these are our icons. I think they look very nice. Let's preview them in prototype mode, in the preview mode, I mean. Yeah, so you arrive at this website and then you get this image which kind of sets your expectations color-wise. Then you scroll down and your expectations are met with these colors kind of matching what we get here. And then we also get these uh, these individual beautiful simple icons, right? So um, this one seems a bit too tall. Let's make it a bit smaller because all of the remaining icons are significantly shorter than this one. So let's just make sure it fits nicely with the rest. Um, yeah, maybe move the pencil a bit outside of that. Let's check that again. Now this one looks too tiny, so let's try and adjust that. I told you, it's just going back and forth sometimes. But it's a necessary part of the process to create something that is something that provides high design value. So yeah, I think this is better. Okay, so I would say our icons are done. I think um, we might be reusing these um, across our page when we create multiple pages, right? And now for the second part, which is going to be significantly faster, the second part of this episode, which is the global auto layout. So the global auto layout, as I said, is going to be containing all the sections in one giant auto layout so that when we do some kind of modifications, we don't really uh, have to adjust anything. This is going to be actually quite fast. Let me just select, I'm gonna select the whole website and then go to auto layout on the right side and click plus. This is going to add auto layout. But as you can see, it kind of messed up our layout. So let's see what is happening right here. First of all, there's this object that we have forgotten about from the very beginning of this series. So I'm gonna just remove it, right? You can see it's gonna move all of these, so that's brilliant. Um, right, and then the alignment. The alignment is, the things within this layout are not gonna be left aligned, but center aligned. Actually, it shouldn't matter because all of these should have the same width, but anyway, let's get to center top alignment. And then this right here, this kind of messed up the section. It created this huge space. The intention here was for this to overlap with this right here and it's not overlapping right now. So we have to select these two, press shift A to create an auto layout, then set 
the rectangle to fill container, press shift enter so that we select this whole new auto layout. Let me rename this to CTA section container container and then let's go to fill container on this one as well so this is going to just fill the master the global auto layout the website group right and yeah so let's just set negative spacing for this section right as you can see if i go to the positive area there's going to be a space between the rectangle and the call to action uh, module the call to action component but if I keep going to zero and then just to the negative territory, it's gonna overlap so that uh, it's going to kind of, right? So you see my point. This is 199 uh, pixels tall, so, or points. So let me just set this to minus 100, right? A nice even number. And then for all of these, let me just select this whole auto layout, press enter and then set all of these to fill container. And what happened right now is the website shrunk. Why is that? That is because this auto layout is set to hack, which is going to uh, kind of adjust the width of the parent element to the child elements. And since all, all of these are now to fill, it's gonna fall back until it finds the widest element in our website. So let me just manually select this website auto layout width to 1440, which is the original value that we have used from the very beginning. And so now if we use the guides, you can see how everything falls in nicely within the grid system. That's very good. And now let me just show you how powerful this is if you want to rearrange something. Let's say I want to keep adding these horizontal cards. Let's say I need to add a lot of new cards. And you can see that is no problem thanks to our new arrangement, right? So let me again remove all of these. But uh, the point here is whenever I need to make a change, add a section, remove a section, rearrange a section, rearrange it back, do that all over again, make up my mind and then just I keep adding and removing stuff and it's extremely extremely quick and because we have set up all of our components and instances in this way now and I for example um, when I adjust text so let me just multi multiply this description right you can see it kind of enlarges this whole instance and the instance in turn is gonna move everything that's below it thanks to this structure that we have set up. So this is especially useful when, for example, you then hand this over to people who are, to, to copywriters essentially, to content specialists, and then they, um, they kind of start adding stuff, right? New text. You wanna make sure your website is arranged in a way where that doesn't mess up your workflow or just to save time for yourself in general. Very powerful and yeah that's the global auto layout on our homepage. So over the course of this series, we have created all these components and these sections from scratch. We have we made sure that, that this is easily scalable. We have created a whole system. You might even call this a design system, right? So this is kind of a very simple design system. And what is great about this is now creating more pages and adding sections and just creating a whole clickable functional prototype is going to be very easy. And that's gonna come in handy in the upcoming episodes of this series where we will be creating multiple pages. We will maybe even create the mobile version and then just keep on adding stuff to our system and make sure that everything works together nicely and make sure we are working in the most efficient way possible. So thanks for watching. Definitely subscribe if you wanna stay tuned to this series. There are more episodes coming in over the next few days and weeks. Uh, I hope this video was useful. I hope you learned something new and this series in general is helping you to understand web design in Figma. And if there's anything unclear, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for tuning into this episode and I will see you in the next one.